Hey folks, it's Lindsey Huddleston back in the building again. SPS, Sports Psychology Solutions, back in my home city, Detroit, Michigan, on 7 Mile near Livernoise at Motor City Popcorn with the man, Rainier Golightly, uh, Henry Ford alum. Uh, he was really tight with my big brother, uh, Sean Huddleston, who passed. That was his man. So I know sitting down with him has Sean Huddleston happy in heaven. But I'm here with Mr. Popcorn himself, Motor City Popcorn, doing it. How you doing, man? What's going on, my man? I'm good. I'm good. We up in here. Uh, thank you for being available uh, thank you for allowing me to come to your beautiful space but what I really want to come and talk to you about is not just to promote what you're doing at Motor City Popcorn so people can come and get this good stuff right here we got a good mix right here the gourmet cheddar cheese and caramel popcorn that's a nice one right there yeah, yeah. but also to kind of hear your story of perseverance uh, overcoming adversity uh, from where we came from 20,000 Evergreen at Henry Ford High School to be where you are right now to be a business that is thriving in the COVID and just really kind of hear your story so it can help motivate people. I remember you and I sat down years ago. We were chopping it up. And I was always impressed with your business acumen, your ability to stay calm and cool despite things not going the right way. And, and here we are at this point uh, with your brick and mortar store, the Motor City Popcorn. So let's let's hear the story so we can get the people on, on, on point and help them out a little bit. Well, yeah, man, I started uh, Motor City Popcorn in 2012. Okay. Um, literally just started, you know, on the, the uh, stove at home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Why popcorn? Well... To take it all the way back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, I used to work at uh, an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I started from dishwasher and I worked my way up every position in the back of the house. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought I knew how to run a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted a restaurant. And I knew with my DJ career. Yeah. Uh, DJ Babe. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with the DJ career, I knew as I got older, I said, man, I don't want to keep coming home three in the morning. Uh, you know, got to unload the car, get, get the crates out. And this yeah, and yeah. So, and and truthfully, you know, it's not like I'm getting four hundred one k and retirement all mm -hmm. that. So, what are you going to do when you get older? You mm -hmm. got to get in something. So, right. I, I wanted to go back to the first love, you know, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Thought I knew how to run a restaurant. Thought I knew everything because mm -hmm. I did every position mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I was preparing myself to open a restaurant. Yeah. Now, luckily, at one time, I had a lot of money. I tried to get this building, and the guy wouldn't give it to me. And uh, I ended up blowing that money, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, money come, yeah, money go. Uh, yeah. Up and down with but, uh, it. But I'm glad I didn't get it, because I didn't know... I didn't know like anything I know now. So you know, about to open, try to do a, a a chicken and fish restaurant in Chicago on some mm -hmm. DJ stuff. Mm -hmm. Came across Garrett's popcorn. Yep. And I saw the excitement. I saw the, the, the craziness. And I said, I mean, Garrett's popcorn is an institution. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it's, it's when you're in Chicago, you mm -hmm. gotta get it. Gotta get me some Garrett's while you're there. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to bring to Detroit. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, I remember Otto's. Yeah. And Northland. Yeah. You hey, you didn't go on auto that you had a couple extra dollars. You had a fresh outfit or something because the ladies working behind the, yeah. the counter autos and all that. So that was the whole thing. It was like, well, in Detroit, no one's talking about a popcorn place since right. autos. Right. So I just felt there was a, the market was wide open. Mm -hmm. It was a product that's universally loved. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, how can you go wrong? With, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's how I got into it. I, I scratched the chicken and fish idea. Yeah. And got yeah. The popcorn. Let me ask you a question. You and I have been talking um, over the years and just recently, but you know, you, you, you're really uh, transparent when you say what you didn't know. But we from Detroit, West Side, Seven Mile. We hustlers by nature. Many people claim the title hustler, but talk about the difference between a hustler and an entrepreneur, and being able to be able to have a real profit compared to just cash in your pocket was what we talked about, you know, before. Um, I think with a hustler, I mean, one, I don't mind the term hustler. Mm -hmm. Because a hustler, I mean, you know, you give 110%. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, you know, entrepreneur, I mean, that's more of the, uh, the, the, the going by the book style, if you want sure. to say, sure. with it. I think you should have a little bit of the both. Okay. You know, I've been in situations to where, okay, you know, I'm doing a suit and tie way and this and that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm about to put my Adidas on and my hat to the back. And, um, and get to we're it. We're gonna get this, you know. And get to the bag. It's work yeah. anyway. So I think you gotta have a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. and do you think people do, or they try to be one or the other? You know what? I think it's. I think it's. It's um. What I want to say in the right way. It's like 
I think it's something about I, was, I like for me Detroit is a hustler city mm -hmm. I would give more hustlers an entrepreneur mm -hmm. Detroit is full of hustlers mm -hmm. you know with my DJ uh, career I definitely traveled a lot sure and I go to some places and you know and I see uh, black people mm -hmm. especially me I'm, 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 I'm born in Pittsburgh okay uh, so when I go to places like that and I see like our black people are not in the same position mm -hmm. you know yeah, it's easy to take for granted being from Detroit seeing black empowerment compared to going other places exactly exactly when mm -hmm. you're used to a uh, majority black police force and black elected, mm -hmm. elected officials and things like mm -hmm. that but at the same time I think that's what's, what's giving us you know that that energy because mm -hmm. we feel like this is our city right 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 you know, so, right so so we put energy into into creating something so truthfully yeah when i first started we out toward this idea and she like shot me down mm -hmm. and i remember i was so hurt like what you mm -hmm. mean and i had never heard this term she said you don't have any skin in the game Mm. Ain't it? What the hell? She's like, I got all my skin. What you talking about? I'm supposed to cut my cut, cut myself. Yeah, all right, well, I don't know what you what what. Mm -hmm. I'm, you ain't no skin in the game. I know what it is now. Yeah, you know. But what would you define it as for people who don't really know? What would you define uh, skin in the game as? You don't have your foot in the door. You don't have any experience. You don't have any time spent in it. Like, like you're not invested. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. You just you know. Because I woke up one day and said, you know what? Matter of fact, I think I told her I need something like. Uh, I need you to give me a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand for what? I, got, I want to do a popcorn business. What you going? To do? And I and I'm telling you, she was she was like. We just need a hundred thousand for it. And I said, well, if I got a hundred thousand, I know I can pay for everything. But no, what do you need it for? Mm hmm Just give it to me. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And then I'm gonna be able to pay for what I need. Mm hmm Now I know that's a horrible idea. Mm hmm You know, but uh, but I remember, yeah, I remember she told me. She said, you don't have any skin in the game. Right. I was mad. I was actually upset with her. I'm sure. Really, really, really upset with her. Because you were rejected. You know, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I knew that she was a person that could get yeah. money. Yeah. Come on, man. I got, I got this idea. Come on. So how often does that happen that people have great ideas but don't have the capital but can't persevere to get through? Because obviously you were able to get through that hurt that she put to you and, and get to the point to have skin again. How did you navigate out of that? Well, one thing I, that, I, that I now preach to anybody, mm -hmm. and I don't care if it's a business, if it's a hustle, if it's whatever, you got to have, you have to be educated on what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But can I just be passionate? Oh, I love it, man. I really want to nope. do it. I'll no. stay up late. No. That's not enough. No. It's not because if, it's, if it involves, it doesn't even, I, I, I was going to say if it involves money transaction mm -hmm. and i might not even say that you have to know what you're doing and how you're doing or you're going to keep wasting time mm -hmm. you know so for me the first thing i did was i took classes with score okay and talk about what score is so score is a program is mostly free classes mm -hmm. if you do pay you're paying 10 20 bucks sure so um, but it's mainly led by retired entrepreneurs, yeah, business owners, mm -hmm. things of that. People, People who've have, done it, yeah, they've done it. They teach these classes. Mm -hmm. So I took several score classes. Okay, shout out to score. I, yeah, and I got a mentor, a guy named Jim. Mm -hmm. Jim hates my idea, even to this day, probably. <laughs> <laughs> even to this day, even while he eating your you popcorn, know, yeah. he hated it. <laughs> because the idea was a retail store and a wholesale store. Okay. And Jim told me years ago, you can't do both. Um, and I said, well, you can, because I'm like, they have Nike stores. But they have outlets. Right. Then mm -hmm. they sell Nike and Foot Locker. And oh, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And distribute them. So the idea was, yeah, Nike sold everywhere. But you might go to a Nike store. You can get exclusives. You mm -hmm. get things that's not in Foot Locker and yada, mm -hmm. yada. So that's my idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, my product is sold everywhere. But you might only get the Motor City Mix in certain stores. Mm -hmm. But you come here, you can get everything. Right. That was the whole vision I had even back then. Mm-hmm. Jim hated it, by the way. Mm -hmm. Now, not to fast forward, 
it is hell to them both. <laughs> it is. So you get what he was talking yeah, about. So we'll get to that, but yeah, yeah. it's hell to them. Right. Um, because it's two totally separate businesses. Right. But so so anyway, I, I took score, um, and then I did uh, Build Institute. Build Institute. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And Build Institute. Shout out to Build Institute. Uh, what was great about Bill is that that's why I say the passion doesn't work because Bill told me about my numbers. At the time, I was doing three farmers markets a week. So you like I'm killing them. Well, I would I make some money, especially I had one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, and I had one on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday and Thursday, I mean, I mean, I up. done Wednesday. I just put the money in my pocket. Thursday, I just go to the next one. Never really count the money and know this this I never sat down and put on paper well, how much are you paying each week for a spot how much are you paying in bags mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying how much this, this and, you, and everything matters everything you know, that you're spending on counts it matters it doesn't matter after three days you look and say oh I got I got, I got, I got some money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but never sat down to say well you know how much you spending on this this how much you know, you see, how much does each bag cost mm -hmm. I, I never did that when I did do it through the bill class, I said, you know what? That Wednesday market is not really profitable. Wow. When I look um, at it, and, and, it and I think the challenge people have is they'll say, you got to hit it all. You got to just do it. When you step back and say, that's not even worth my time. I'm actually making more money by not going. But that's only because you got into the numbers. Yeah. Okay, it, it broke down. I mean, shoot, I'm there. X amount of hours. You know, uh, well, I gave myself. Ten dollars an hour, fifteen an hour. Y'all mm -hmm. supposed to cost this, this. Ah, shit, I ain't working. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what Bill did, and and from this day on, uh, I've kept that. Mm -hmm. You know, that was in 2014. Okay, two years in, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So so after Bill. Um, I think I did, I did launch Detroit. Yeah. Like I said, I, I joined Food Lab Detroit. Okay. Um, I started applying for all these programs. Uh, I mean, are, are, are you by yourself when you're applying and being in all these different programs, or is that what a lot of people are doing, or are people not taking advantage of these resources out here, you think? Well, you know, I spoke on a panel with uh, U of M. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but <laughs> I see a little, a little maze and blue going on over here, you know. Uh, I spoke on the panel, which I, I was invited. And the one thing, the main thing I told them is that all of these beautiful resources, but I don't think the inner city knows. Because I've taken many classes, been in many programs. Let me guess, you're the only one who represents us up in there. Very few. Mm -hmm. Of course, very few. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've had opportunities to grant dollars and, 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 and opportunities. But if we're not there, we're not getting them. See, that's clearly an issue because you being the one person or one of two or three in the room speaks to the disparity that's there, meaning that for some reason we're not being able to access the things we need to access to be able to get success. What do you think has to change about that? Uh, education. You know what I'm saying? It was no, it's, it's kind of not, like never really been a big campaign to mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, this and that. Now, Detroit, you've got tons of entrepreneurial ideas going on right now absolutely you know every week there's some kind of pop-up event mm -hmm. bringing in vendors mm -hmm. and this and that and i ain't gonna lie well, of course me i want to do every pop-up i could mm -hmm. in the beginning mm -hmm. for me i found out numbers once you break the numbers down a lot of them were a waste of time mm -hmm. for me for me but 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 i just can't get past and i hear everything you said but that mindset of i gotta hit this spot i gotta hit this but i'm out here i'm hustling and maybe that's the definition and the difference that a hustler may not be breaking it down looking at the numbers to say to make strategic decisions compared to just completely being passionate thinking i just got to show up and that's gonna be it now some of it i mean some of it's relationship because you start to meet people mm -hmm. you know and, and in due time you could you know might be worth a relationship or whatever. Sometimes it's just about being there. Because I used to hear people say, man, you everywhere. Yeah. You hear that, man? Every time yeah. Come out, man. You here. But there's, there, there's some cachet to that, meaning if you... You don't necessarily got to shake everybody's hand, but if they keep seeing you at the place to be, they were like, this man is legit. Yeah. And, and you don't have to say a word. You just go in and handle your business, and it's a nod in the wing. They're like, okay, he's there. And I think people need to realize that, too. Sometimes you got to just show up. Right. So it was good on that end, too. But again, I wasn't making any money. Okay. Okay, let's get back to that, because that's what we're in business for, yeah. right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the, 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 the popularity and, and yada, yada, and this and that. For some, is that enough? 
or for some that'll do it? For me. You said ain't me. <laughs> it wasn't. Because it wasn't any growth. At the end of the day, you want to, you know, you want to elevate. Well, does that mean it's possible a lot of entrepreneurs hide behind the numbers, the real numbers that they may give the appearance of success and number numerically their books don't show that and they continue to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, there's people that I know that are still doing pop ups mm -hmm. like five, six years later. No, not to them because if, if it works, if, if you're cool. Mm -hmm. But I had a vision. Mm -hmm. I knew that this is not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> like, no, this is go out, do a pop up. Okay, even if you made 200 bucks, whatever, 250. I might put a hundred into it, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, I made an extra hundred and fifty mm -hmm. for a couple hours mm -hmm. and, and passed out more cars, mm -hmm. yada yada. So that's what that's what you call it. Yeah. It wasn't for me. For me again it mm -hmm. was Garrett's. Yeah, right. You know, right. I need all these people outside. I need people coming in town mm -hmm. saying I gotta mm -hmm. go to mostly pop up mm -hmm. I go back. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting that at this pop up. Yeah. Right. So so it wasn't my end result. Because you had a bigger vision of where you wanted to be and you believe that it can happen. Because I think some people may have the vision and don't really believe it can happen. So they stop where they are or they'll hit that, that ceiling. And, and some people, I'll say too, uh, again, no knock, but it's hard to have a job and be 110% in your business. Okay. Let me ask you this. Are you a Dame Dash disciple? No. 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 Okay. Okay. No. I think he's a fool for saying that. I think he led a lot of people the wrong way. Mmm. Now, and here at Mostly Popcorn, I don't use the word boss. I'm not your boss. You know, because we're all in this together. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to, you know, I'm not walking around with my head up. Mm -hmm. I'm working just as hard, if not harder than the employee here. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to never be like, don't don't ever get a boss or something stupid like that. Because one, everybody doesn't have the passion for this. Sure. You sure. Know, last night in this building, I didn't leave till 3 a.m. <sighs> My my last employee left at nine, so from nine p.m. to three a.m. I was by myself, and, and I left the house at eight thirty this morning. <laughs> what? So I had to do deliveries. Right. All the stuff we made last night right. had to be delivered. Right. So I delivered, and then I was here at ten thirty to open up today, and I haven't been home since. So, so that's not everybody. It's not. And, and and you got some people, they're not going to do it. My thing last night was, I got orders that have to be delivered. Mm -hmm. I am not leaving mm -hmm. until they're done. You know, we always talk about the sports team, of course, with SPS. And I'm picking up another thing. When you just describe just a day, what that was like, you remind me of a pro. And I refer to a pro athlete. When they get up, they're committed, they're in the gym, won the game, lost game, they're back in the gym, they're getting the work done, it doesn't stop. And I think what people have to look at is a lot of people say they want this, but if you don't have a pro resume as far as your workout, when I look at you and what you're talking about and when we talk, he said, look, I'm going to be here. You know what I'm saying? There's no question. I think that really puts people aside. Do people really want to be entrepreneurs? They like the idea of being an entrepreneur. What do you think they really want to be? It? Let me tell you, one thing that burned me up, I saw someone on Facebook the other day, and it, and it was like this, this, this guy was saying about, you know, he wanted to be an entrepreneur. He's like, I'm tired of working with other people. Mm -hmm. um, I want to live my own life and this mm -hmm. and that, and, and I'll make more money, you know, and this, this. And I'd stop him like, bro, as an entrepreneur, you're going to work more hours for less pay in the beginning, it's, you know, until everything goes right. Mm -hmm. You'll work 80, 100 hours like nothing. Mm -hmm. And you'll make way less money. So this whole dream of I got my own job, mm -hmm. do my own thing, mm -hmm. you know, and you think all this money floating in and you think that you at the club or, or you're yeah. on vacation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, if you don't get out of here with that. <laughs> that ain't it, babe. That ain't Look, it. Let me tell you. Motor City Popcorn, we did a deal 
with uh, the D Casino in Las Vegas. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So the owner, he's from Detroit, uh -huh. Derek Stevens. Okay. He just opened up his second casino in Vegas. It's called Circa. Really? So the product is in both casinos. They offered to fly me to Vegas next week. I turned them down because we got work to do. You know, a lot so, of people would have said, and they would have posted, "Hey, I'm on a flight on the way to Vegas." Ah, I told them, you know what? I catch you later. Maybe I'll call you for my birthday. Yeah. But this big event that you're doing, mm -hmm. we got work to do, bro. Mm -hmm. I turn mm -hmm. them down because this is what we got to get going. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, I can go to Vegas, kick it, yada yada. It's gonna be pandemonium here in the store. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we ain't gonna make no money. We, you know what I'm saying? And, and not to say that the store can't flow without me. You're not gonna maximize your opportunity. The store is too fresh. We're not. It's not like we've been open in this location, mm -hmm. you know, five years mm -hmm. and everything. We're still fresh. We're still learning the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood's still learning us. We're still promoting like mm -hmm. crazy. We're still trying to do what we can do mm -hmm. to get this store perfected. And we gotta be perfected because we're going to holiday season. Right. So right. We gotta work the kinks out now. Sure, it's important. What can people do for you? What can people who watch the SPS Edge podcast do? You know, our Henry Ford alumni, which they're probably already doing. And just anyone who hears this story and they like. I like what's going on. What can they do to help you? Spread the word. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even. I'm not even going to say come come purchase. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? No. Just just continue to spread the word. Um, you know, my goal is to is to is to make mostly popcorn in the same lane as a Verner's, mm -hmm. as a as a, uh, a Fago, mm -hmm. as a Better Made. When you think of a Detroit product. You know, when you when you make a Detroit box, mm -hmm. a Michigan box or something mm -hmm. like that, that it's a no-brainer that Motor City Popcorn is there. Mm -hmm. So we have to spread the word. We have to make it a household name. Mm -hmm. I like that. And one more thing I want to say before we wrap up. This has been some excellent information, excellent content. I think anyone who's trying to make it happen, they can learn from this. But also going back to the sports analogy, talk about uh, the advice someone gave you not too long ago as far as where we are in the game right now. I thought that was really interesting when you talked about whether it's the first quarter, second half, oh, yeah. or whatnot. So I mean, yeah, a friend of mine, we just having like a, a midlife crisis. You know, she's 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 trying to get her business off the ground, and sometimes we sit and talk on the phone and you know cry on each other's shoulder. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, and what, what she told me, like I say, and I was saying earlier, I, I, I use I use basketball a lot as mm -hmm. analogy. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, yeah, I don't got no problem with that. You know, um, just you know, and this is with my sons. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of things I tell them. You know, man, you know, you gotta, you know. You, you know, you you foul out. You know, you keep messing up. You got you know five, six times, man. You know, you out the game. This, this. You know, things like that. But um, my friend told me she said she said, look, we're 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 at our stage in life where we at halftime. Mm -hmm. You know, so and it, whether it's basketball, football, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whatever. Your first two quarters, you know, even if you're losing, even if you're getting slammed, the first mm -hmm. two quarters, you take that team and you go in the locker room and you write on the chalkboard and you say, well, we didn't do this or we didn't do that. Make adjustments. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every so good gonna coach. We're going to change this and we're going to mm -hmm. change that. And you go out there that third quarter, when they come back on that field or back on that court, they're always running. Now, if you got a teammate that's walking with his head mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want him in the game. Mm -hmm. He better come out that tunnel mm. like this. I don't care if we down by 20. Because mm. we, cause we about to go out here. You got to come out in the second half running to begin bought, with. Yeah, we to bought, begin with. And we bought to change what didn't work the first time. Even if that first half wasn't what you wanted. Yeah. And you need to do what you got to right. do. Because now we know. We saw what didn't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and one, we got to believe that we can beat the other team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit mm -hmm. there like, well, man, they, 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 they too good. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we down by 20, but guess what I'm about to do? You know what I'm saying? I see dude like to shoot from the left. Yeah. I see dude like to take two steps before he goes. Yeah. All right, well, watch what happens when I go back. So and study the game and feel. make the adjustments right. and come back fired up. Go back that second half. And, and like my friend said, we got two quarters left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back there. Let's, let's make some changes. And let's, let's win this second half. You know, second half of the game, second half of life. You know? so, so people can't be fair to give up. I think you tell a story just like when we started. You're a true professional because you know what you want and you go after it. We're going to get ready to wrap up. It's been great talking, man. I think uh, anyone who's going to listen to this is going to benefit from it, no matter what they're trying to do, even the idea of just working hard. And we're going to be back here on Saturday. 
Saturday, uh, uh, October 31st, for the Michigan Michigan State game. Uh, we got. I, 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 I'm not. I don't have a preference. You don't have a preference yet. Motor City Park don't have no preference. You, you, you want. You want just just fans. Yeah, you don't got to be a Wolverine yeah. or a Spartan fan. But we want you up in here. And he won't say it, but I will get you some Motor City popcorn. It's delicious. It's awesome. It's made with love. And when you support Motor City popcorn, you support the future. And I think it's great. I appreciate you taking your time. I know you got about five more hours to be up in here getting it done. Uh, you know. <laughs> I don't know about tonight. Uh-huh. So you don't know about tonight, but this has been good. Tomorrow, definitely. We've been here all night, but it's cool. All right. Well, you see where we are. We'll see you next time. Lindsay Ellis from SPS in the building. Thanks for checking in. Peace.